Welcome. Thank you for joining us for the 4-H National Youth Science Day Challenge, Drone Discovery. I'm Josh Kligman, and I'll be your co-pilot. You're part of thousands of youth and volunteers becoming a 4-H engineer for the day during this year's ninth annual challenge. So this year, you'll explore how drone engineering and remote sensing can be used to solve real-world problems, such as helping a community develop climate change resiliency, energy sustainability, and more. This year's design process has three basic steps. Let's take a look. To succeed in this challenge, you'll need to think like an engineer. The engineering design process has three steps. First, defining the problem. Second, designing solutions. And third, optimizing the design solutions. Let's put this process into action. Ready? Let's get ready for takeoff. Now it's time to choose your drone adventure. In this first activity, you will learn about real life applications for drones and how they can solve community issues. First, determine if you will take on an agriculture or a business challenge. Think about your scenario and how you think a drone could help. What do you think success looks like in this scenario? In the second and third activities, you will investigate the principles and dynamics of flight using a prop copter and a foam plate glider. With the prop copter, think about how you can control the flight pattern to turn left, right, go up, down, or even fly the glider in a big loop. Think about this. How would changing what the plane is made of change the flight pattern? Now that you've learned how to fly the prop copter, it's time to construct your FPG-9 foam plate glider. And I'm gonna teach you how to turn this into this. From your kit, you'll first need to make copies of Appendix A, which is the FPG-9 glider pattern. Make several copies for all members of your team. You'll also take a foam paper plate from your kit, and from home or school, you'll need a pair of scissors, a pen, a penny for a weight, and some masking tape. Let's start by cutting out the FPG-9 glider pattern along the bolded lines. Be sure not to cut the dotted lines in the back of the plane. Just follow the bolded lines all around. Next, you're gonna place the pattern in the center of the plate and trace around it. And make sure to mark all the lines. So put it in the flat part of the plate. And as you trace your lines around, make sure to note the indentations and also the right and left elevons to note where to make cuts in your paper plate. Well, I never said I was an artist, but once you have your trace set, cut out the FPG-9 from the foam plate by following the pen lines you just traced. You can use the tail pattern to mark the rudder lines so you know where to cut the rudder on the tail. Next, you want to make cut slits for the left and right elevon on the back of the plane by following the lines that you drew earlier using your glider patterns. You'll use these to control the flight path of your glider. And then slide the foam tail into the back of your foam plane, like so, and you can secure it by taking some masking tape and placing it along the sides so that the tail doesn't shift left or right so easily. That'll keep it nice and straight. Once the tail is secure, you can take a penny to add some weight on the front of the plane to help with flight by placing the penny over here and securing it on the top of the wing with a piece of tape. Now it's time to fly your glider. 
Remember, use your elevons and your rudder to control the flight path of your plane.